Okay, well, <clears throat> I've been an active music practitioner for over 20 years. Um, I have an uh, undergraduate degree in ethnomusicology and a um, PhD in feminism. Um, a lot of my professional music experience, both on the stage and in community, <coughs> has informed my scholarship um, in ways that I think not just as a practitioner, but as somebody who's utilized music over many years to build community, as a way of building community, as a way of engaging community. So I'm an, I consider myself an artivist in that sense, or an artist activist, being that I use music as a tool not only to get my own message across, right, what I believe is important, what I've seen my community um, react to, or uh, the needs I see in my community, also the empowerment, the beauty, right, a lot of my lyrics um, in the music and the songwriting that I do with my group Quetzal involve a lot of that sentiment. <coughs> but I also utilize music and part particularly participatory music and dance practices as a way of engaging community. So that is that means that I use music and I incite communities through the tools of music uh, to have dialogues, right? So dialogue, I think, is one of the most important things that any social movement can have um, as a way to build consensus, as a way to explore possibilities, imagine new realities, right? So dialogue to me is, is extremely important and I believe that there's no better way of doing that and, and as a way of being inclusive to others as well than through music. And so I try to do that as much as I can. I teach those methods in the college. I teach um, as an assistant professor here at Scripps. When I got here, I decided to design a lot of my coursework or my courses um, based on a lot of these, uh, this philosophy, this artivist philosophy. So my courses range from Chicano, Latino, gender and popular culture to, you know, methods courses such as, you know, the fandango as a decolonial tool or collective songwriting theory and knowledge production. So it's all sort of, you know, it's teaching race, teaching class, gender, sexuality, uh, community building, but all through this lens of art, music and popular culture. music and activist mm -hmm. movements. How have you seen that role that music plays change with social media or mm -hmm. just like from, you know, we're talking about civil rights era, mm -hmm. you know, music and activism, Vietnam, yeah. until now, how have you seen like okay. music and activism change? Right. So I think that um, music and activism have always gone hand in hand, right? Historically, we see it, right? There's so much you can build soundtracks um, that have given, that have inspired entire movements, right? <coughs> and you have those soundtracks out there, you know, Rolas de Aslan and a couple of other, um, so many like, uh, you know, like record companies like the Smithsonian Folkways label have a host of, of compilations that sort of reflect the times, right? Labor songs, there's, you know, I mean, the U.S. has a ton of music that revolves around how people would come together and sing these songs during, you know, to inspire themselves to, to be together. I think that is really important and that has always happened. So songs and music and social movement go, have always gone hand in hand. I think that what happens, however, is this idea that um, with the industrialization of music comes uh, a music, this very same music that was born out of community struggle and social movement can oftentimes be um, harnessed or um, co-opted by industry, right? So uh, you often find that it's easy to package and sell revolution, right? So I think that music can also be co-opted, you know, and uh, messages can be, can be um, uh, neutralized in that way, uh, they lose their power in that sense. And it ha it, I think it's happened to every movement, right? So for example, songs like Revolution by the Beatles, right? A lot of people, you know, the very popular song now, 
um, that many years later, uh, to the dismay of the group maybe, or maybe John Lennon is turning in his grave, uh, was the revolution was used to sell Nike shoes at some point in the early 90s. I don't know if anybody remembers that, but I mean, so things like that can happen, right? Uh, popular media finds a way of grabbing a group that was maybe born in a struggle and their music and twisting it in a new generation and it just loses its power, right? You see that with other groups such as um, Rage Against the Machine, for example, right? There's a really popular Chicano um, singer that wrote these amazing lyrics and it's like rock and like hip hop. If you haven't heard them, you should look them up. But part of their music was used in Abu Ghraib to torture some of the, of some of the prisoners, right? to the dismay of the singer who was mortified, right? Some of the soldiers like Rage Against the Machine and they would use this music to tor torture the slaves, right? So in terms of music as produ product, I think that you can take it and it can lose its power. It depends on, once you re an artist releases their music, it's, it's pretty much up to the user, right? The person using or purchasing. And so I think that that's a really tricky thing, right? So any music can be taken and used. But I think that, so my argument always in music is the most important aspect about it is that how people engage in it and through the dialogue and through this uh, co as communion, right? And in these moments. Um, and it's an, an important tool that, that we need to keep thinking about music as a way of bringing people together and not just as soundtracks to a movement or the stuff that happens between important speakers, right? Because oftentimes you have events or, uh, you know, marches, for example, and in between they might have one songwriter who sings important content, but then, okay, he's, okay, get him off because the, the real speaker's coming on to give you the real stuff. It's like that sort of stuff to me, I think, um, happened a lot in the 60s. In the 70s, music was sort of a soundtrack to the movement. Well, there's a lot of gen a new generation or many generations now about 10 plus years in that have really tried to think about music as the actual movement and not so much as the soundtrack to the movement, right? So I think that artists like myself and others that I know in the community and all over across the country are really trying to think about music as a way of being in community with others so that it marginalizes capital, right? And the way it can take a hold of a message and twist it, right? Or use it in a different time and place against you, so to speak, right? And, and, and really think about, you know, um, and really displace your original message, right? So I think that um, we need to think about how our, our messages are going out there. And, and really do with others as opposed to really, um, the artist has a double responsibility, I think. That's not to shut out the person that wants to express themselves individually and who sees things that, uh, that we've all been inspired by those kinds of artists that, Im that use music as an important message. But I think it's also really important to think about music as a community building tool. Sorry, I like go off on tangents, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I'm just curious how what that looks like to use music as a community building tool. Yeah. Well, um, there are two very important uh, methods that I engage in, and I try to teach on campus and in diff my different classes. One is um, um, a method we developed along with Mayan communities in Chiapas, Mexico, um, called the collective songwriting method. That's what I'm calling it, right? Um, and it's a, a way of having dialogue with community or whoever's in the room or based on a reading as I do in my classrooms but you have a dialogue with people and you you write different you brainstorm and together we come up with a song it's very a simplified version of what really happens and there's this whole all of these steps that I am that I'm really trying to articulate lately and write about but that's one method where collectively community has a dialogue and writes a song together. It's a collective effort. That's really important because in conversations happen that you wouldn't normally have across a boardroom dialogue table, right? Or, or at an important meeting, right? Because you're dealing with music, people tend to sort of um, 
sort of frame their minds in very different ways. They kind of get a little more creative. They maybe use metaphors, you know, and they have discussions based on the metaphors. And you kind of get to the conversations are very different than, than having just a linear conversation, so to speak, right, where you have to formulate these important thoughts, right? In a, in a collective songwriting workshop, you really get to sort of experiment and like, your words don't have to be complete sentences, you know, you, but you still have these important dialogues. So that's one way. Another way is um, participatory music and dance practice that I've been utilizing along with others in uh, other artists and musicians in uh, East LA communities to um, this, um, it, this participatory music and dance practice is native to the state of Veracruz and it's called Fandango, right? Um, its roots are Spanish, indigenous, and African in nature. And it's about 400 year old tradition. And we as artivistas have utilized it to um, teach others how to engage in the practice. There's a whole protocol, there's a repertoire, um, but there's also a lot of um, improvisational aspects. There's poetry, there's um, dance, there's music. And the most important part about this practice is that it's not a performance. It's not about building groups. It's about having people engage in the practice. Everybody engages in it. So there's no audience participant divide, right? There's no audience or performer divide. There's there are only participants. It takes place in a circle, right? And the whole point is just to be together and create music together. And that is a really important uh, practice that the people that begin to engage in it, I see them like, wow, this is amazing. We've never, I've never done this before. Or I've never seen anything like it, right? Because we are used to experiencing music as by some people that are patrons or as performers, right? There is no other role in our society anyway, or the society that I grew up in, in Western societies in general that have anything other than the performer or, or patron, right? And so this practice, this fandango practice disrupts this, this uh, relationship to music. And so those are two very important ways that, um, major ways that I utilize time and again in my classes and in community building. Yeah, sounds really fun. <laughs> yeah, it's a lot of fun. <laughs> how do you hope to bring that here, or how are you engaging with the recent, this kind of, I don't know, unrest and yeah. disappointment and kind of this disillusionment on 5C campuses? Yeah. And how, how are you engaging with that conversation? Well, I, I try to um, I try to really uh, bring our attention back to to what what I'm talking about. You know, the music um, right now in in the pro I was actually in Cuba when I heard about all the the protests at CMC, the first protests at CMC, and um, establishing a, a study abroad there. And um, I was really excited and inspired by it. And I thought, wow, this is I wonder if my students are going to make those connections, you know. So the first thing I asked when I got back was, okay, was there any music? What were people doing? Like, tell me what, what it sounded like. What were bodies, how were bodies gathering? What was happening in this space, you know? And I've gotten several essays and people, you know, just in the conversations describing how they, for those who are taking my Fandango class, sort of making that correlation saying, I heard a lot of call and response because there's a lot of call and response in Fandango, right? And I heard a lot of call and response and it was different than Fandango, but it was so empowering and it was great. And we were all gathering and all, all the masses moved, you know, the bodies moved together and like, you know, all of these um, correlations between some of the things that we've been reading and, and the power of, of many and the collective consciousness of people really are, are sort of it was a great way of sort of reiterating what we had been talking about. And the second part, and I'm also teaching a collective songwriting course right now, and they were really excited, and I encouraged some of the students, uh, their final project is to conduct a workshop with a community group site. And I encouraged some of the, one of the groups to go out and speak to the CMCers if they want to create a collective songwriting, a so collective songwriting workshop with them. And um, I think they're really tired and doing a whole lot of other things and probably catching up with coursework. And so that's not going to happen. But 
part of the idea was um, getting them to think like, okay, this is where you've seen me model this practice. You know what you should do. You know what it looks like. Like, I encourage you all to use these tools. You have tools to go out and do this. The fandangueros, for example, in my class have haranas. They have a way of, of engaging. They understand this. Like, so now you share it. Like, this is the part where you can share some of what you've learned, right? And, and I make myself available too, right? I say like, tell me if you want me to come in and conduct a workshop with any one of the groups. Um, tell me if you'd like um, any assistance in any way to do those sorts of things, you know, and to really think about some of the stuff that they've learned. And so I can just make myself available and, uh, and, uh, and engage in the conversations as well, right? Do you have anything you want to add or any final thoughts? So this is for media. This is for your media studies class. Yes. Media and social okay. change. Media and social change. Okay. And we're right now doing a project. We all have to conduct media campaigns. Mm. So our project is sort of centered around music mm. and um, pulling our music from the civil rights movement all the way till today, more associated <coughs> with Black Lives Matter, mm -hmm. and pulling footage also spanning those years and sort of mixing it all up. Okay. Um, to sort of suggest that there hasn't been, um, there has been a lot of change since the 60s, yeah. but it's still not, in a lot yeah. of ways we're still in the same place. Yeah. Um, mm. And we're trying to draw on the power of music to like get people to pay attention because I think that that's one of the strengths of music is that people yeah. want to hear and want to yeah participate um, yeah yeah so. so I love to hear you say that you know because um participation I think that with media or music I think one of our biggest I think our biggest crutch here in the United States is complacency, right? Complacency and non-participation. Like people don't know how to create community. One of the things that I feel is extremely important is as a, a human being is not only to prevent the sorts of things that are happening in Ferg that happen in Ferguson and, and uh, you know, what Black Lives Matter are responding to and what happens here at CMC, for example, I think that's really important to react and to and to and to respond, right? Uh, but it's not also not just about putting out fires every time. I think we need to have sustainable ways of engaging with each other, to building community. We don't, we aren't taught, or you all here in the, in your coursework, you're not taught how to build community. How do you do that? Nobody. Um, I think concretely teaches maybe various methods or finds ways of really sort of articulating what that means, right? That it's messy, that it can be, that it has to be, you have to be committed in a way, right? That you, that it's not all, it's not all fun and games, right? That it's, that it takes work, right? But that it's also very rewarding, that it can be very um, life assuring for everybody, right? Um, and that I think is really important. It's just n to learn not to just always react but to consistently build so that you're also generating energy for yourself because all of the, the the protests and things of that sort are really important but they're also really taxing right and you all as students as human beings right that's how movements oftentimes are killed off it's not that they weren't important and they, they don't leave a lasting impression on new generations I think it's really important look at ethnic studies were built I mean they, there were a lot of strides one, right? But it's, if we don't continue to build in ways that are also um, generative for us on a daily basis, just like those little things every time, right? Whether it's building music together, whether it's other things, gatherings, you know, uh, making it a part of our daily lifestyles, then it's not going to, then we will burn out, right? We will burn out and, and, and before you know it, you know, Everything we've worked for it will, it's like going up a sand hill, you know, and it's, it's important to also stay healthy and, and keep generating that hope for ourselves, you know, 
and not, not always putting out fires, right? Not building, not building just to put out fires, but building just to build, to be community, to be, you know, finding those ways. If we don't have those ways and we invent them, then we find ways of generating the, that, right? And that's part of, I, you do it, I try to do it through music. There are other ways of doing it. Music isn't the only way, right? But I think it's important for us to, to, to pay attention to that, right? To keep building in these in a myriad of ways, right? And um, not just reacting all the time, right? Yeah. 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 Or do both. <laughs> <laughs> I say both. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So yeah. 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 Cool. Well. Thank you. No, thank you guys. Thank Sorry, you. I'm like, you have a lot to edit, honey. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs>